वेलकम एवरीबॉडी टू डेज डेलीबरेशन विल बी ऑन दी एनाटोमी ऑफ किडनीज इन सम डोमेस्टिक मैनल्स दिस यूरिनरी सिस्टम इज कंपोज ऑफ किडनीज आर द मेन कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ दिस सिस्टम एंड इफ यू लुक टू दी दिगर दे आर ए पेयर ऑफ बीन सेपेड structures situated at the cranial aspect of the abdominal cavity at its dorsal part and remain above the peritoneum they are retroperitoneal in position they are smooth surfaced in most of the mammals but in some of the animals they are not smooth surfaced and uh, rather they are lobulated in appearance this is due to presence of grooves and therefore we are getting a number of lobe these are the kidneys of the cow uh, this is the left kidney and this is the right kidney right kidney is almost bean shaped left kidney is little bit irregular in appearance the right kidney is having two surfaces one is dorsal surface other is the ventral surface a uh, left kidney is having uh, dorsal surface ventral surface and an extra surface which is known as the ruminal surface uh, in general both the kidneys are bean shaped and smooth per surface in appearance in most of the mammals as i told you earlier now these paired organs are responsible for the formation of the urine and this urine is conveyed through this duct these are known as the ureters these ureters are ultimately joining with the urinary bladder from urinary bladder it is being discharged outside through the urethra there been separate structures bilaterally placed both the ureters they are joining with the urinary bladder which is situated at the floor of the pelvic cavity and this is leading to the urethra so this is the urinary bladder a thick wall pouch the whole of the organ is retroperitoneal in position it has been already told and in some mammals these kidneys are lobulated in appearance due to presence of certain grooves here in between the lobes now whatever may be the shape smooth surfaced or lobulated they are encapsulated by a thick fibrous capsule now if we want to see the structure of the kidney inside we have to cut a cross section this is a sciatal section of the kidney it is enclosed by the capsule within the capsule we are getting the parenchyma of the kidney which is divided into two zones so one is outer zone which is known as the cortex and inner zone which is known as the medulla and just close to the hilus where the renal arteries enter renal veins comes out and the ureter comes out this depressed area is known as the renal sinus so renal sinus is a depressed area occupied by all these organs i have told you now the cortex and the medulla 
they are demarcated by their colors the outer zone is pale and inner zone is little bit darker in appearance now this is a section of the kidney which is encapsulated by thick capsule the cortex is the area where the main unit of the kidneys that are the nephrons are situated the nephron is composed of a number of tubules along with malpighian corpuscle this is the bowman's capsule this is the structure of the nephron which is composed of a round shaped capsule like structure which is known as the bowman's capsule and who this bowman's capsule is enclosing a tuft of blood vessels known as the glomerulus here is the place where this filtration occurs this filtrate pass through a highly convoluted tubule which is known as the proximal convoluted tubule pct then it pass through a narrow tube which is u shaped nature and goes up and again there are a, a lot of tubules they are coil on itself which is known as the distal convoluted tubule and finally the filtrate passing through this proximal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule and ultimately passing to the collecting duct now this whole of the unit is situated in the cortical area the structure bowman's capsule and glomerulus together is known as the malpighian corpuscle the all are malpighian corpuscles and they are connected by the collecting duct this collecting ducts they are joining together to form the duct of bellin now if you see under microscope the malpighian corpuscles will appear as round round materials within the parenchyma of the kidney and surrounding this malpighian corpuscles we are getting the sections of the proximal convoluted tubule as well as the distal convoluted tubule now here in the medullary region we are getting the convergence of the collecting tubules and they are appearing in the form of renal pyramids they look like pyramids so that they are known as the renal pyramids and the apex of the pyramids are called the papillae now this malpighian corpuscles we are getting over here in the cortex and they filter about 180 liters of filtrate per day but maximum of the filtrate is being reabsorbed into the body within the proximal convoluted tubule and rest only 2 to 3 liters or 4 liters are being discharged through the collecting tubules so all this collecting tubules here it is coming over here one collecting tubule another one another one they are joining together to form the duct of bellini this duct of bellini of different zones they are converging into the renal papilla which we are getting over here 
So this is the cortex and this is the medulla and this junction is known as the corticomedullary zone. In the corticomedullary zone, there are some special nephrons, about 15% of the total number. They are known as juxtamedullary nephrons and most of them are involved with the control of flow of blood through this glomerular tuft with the help of juxtaglomerular apparatus. That is a separate issue we will discuss in some other day. I told you earlier that depressed area close to the hilus. This is the hilus. This is also hilus. Hilus are situated at the medial border and in some of the animals they are not exactly situated at the medial border. In case of left kidney it is situated at the dorsal surface of the left kidney but in case of the right kidney it hilus is situated at the mid ventral region. This is known as the renal sinus this depression. This renal sinus accommodates a large funnel secret structure which is known as the renal pelvis. This large funnel. This large funnel is divided into two parts. One is upper part and the lower part. Each of the upper part again divides into several small funnel separate structure. These are known as the calices minors. So here is one calices minor. Here is another calices minor. So practically we are getting some small, small funnels. These are known as the calices minors. The small funnels are receiving each of the papilla. So each of the papilla is received by funnel shaped structure. This is known as the calices minor. So there will be a number of calices minor which will correspond to the number of pyramids or papillae. These calices minors of one side will join with the calices minors of the other side and will form the calices major. It is, this is calices major. These are the calices minor. The calices majors of both the sides, they are joining together from the renal pelvis, which is forming actually the ureter. And since the function of the kidneys depends on the circulation of blood through this organ, we must know about the anatomical disposition of the branches of the renal artery. Renal artery is entering into the substance of the kidney. So, if we remove this pelvis of the ureter and see the renal artery entering the organ, Renal artery after entering into the pelvis is divided into some segmental branches. These are all segmental branches. From the segmental branches, small branches are arising and each of them is going in between the pyramids. So these are known as the interlobar branches. When this interlobar branch will reach to the base. This is the apex of the pyramid and this is the base of the pyramid. When this arteries will reach to the base, they will be divided into arch shaped vessel which are known as the arcuate arteries. From the arcuate artery, some parallel blood vessels they are destined to the periphery through the cortex of the kidney. 
So this arch separate arteries are known as the arcuate arteries and the parallel vessels which are arising from the arcuate artery going towards the periphery through the cortex are known as the interlobular artery. And look here in this figure, this is the arcuate artery and from arcuate artery some parallel arteries they are going towards the periphery. These are known as the interlobular artery. From interlobular arteries, afferent blood vessels are originating and entering into the substance of the malphagian corpuscles and from the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. These are the small arterioles which are originating from the arcuate artery and going towards the cortex of the kidney. From these are known as the interlobular artery and from e each of the interlobular artery a series of blood vessels originate, very minute blood vessels originate. These are known as the afferent blood vessels. They enter into the Bowman's capsule from the malpharian corpuscle and finally they go out of this Bowman's capsule as efferent arterioles. These efferent arterioles immediately after it their exit breaks down into number of finer branches and is distributed within the convoluted tubules which are responsible for reabsorption of the filtrate which took place in the malpighian corpuscles. So that is about the disposition of the arteries. Artery originated from the arcuate artery. Parallel to the arcuate artery, you will get the arcuate vein. And from this capillary plexus, the venous blood will be collected and will be joined with the arcuate vein. So this is the anatomical explanation of the blood vessels of the kidneys to perform its function. Now this is the picture of the cerebral section of the kidneys. I told you that these are the renal pyramids which is having their papillae. Each of the papillae is inserted into the calyces minors forming the calyces major and the ureter. Now if we see the finer details under light microscope we will see the disposition of the malphagian corpuscles. Now look here this is a latex cast of a single glomerulus. This cast of the blood vessels of the glomerular tuft and you can see the loops which are actually the blood vessels of the glomerular tuft and from here the efferent blood vessels has come out and is distributed to the different parts of the convoluted tubule known as the peritubular vascular plexus. Now this is a cast of this renal artery, this is the aorta and uh, this is the main renal artery. These are the segmental branches and the segmental branches are finally going forming an arch, these are the arcuate artery, from there interlobular arteries originate. Now if you look to this structure, each of the kidney are in, remain in contact with the endocrine glands, these are known as the adrenal glands, that is why these are also known as the suprarenal glands. The position of the right kidney is little bit fixed because it remains generally lodged in the renal fossa of the liver. The cranial end of the right kidney remains lodged in the renal fossa of the liver and liver is a, a fixed structure, so right kidney is a fixed structure. The le position of the left kidney varies, it is situated a little behind and remains below the bodies of the third, fourth and fifth lumbar tangus process. So this is all about the disposition of this kidney in general in different domestic mammals.